Got an exciting video for you today. I'm pumped up. We're going to get into a hive today now that it's almost fall, 16 days away. We're going to just open up a hive and start looking. I'm going to walk you through what I see. This is going to be important for you guys that are new to beekeeping. You're kind of unfamiliar with how to evaluate frames and how to do an assessment, whether or not the uh, colony is okay or not. We're going to do that today. Open up a hive. I'll tell you, uh-oh, this hive is in trouble, or wow, this hive has it made. And you're going to learn how to read it as a master beekeeper, so stay tuned for that. And I was looking at a hive today, doing some weed trimming around it. Guess what I saw around the entrance? I couldn't believe what I saw. It was sort of depressing. They were dead drones laid out there on the bottom board around the entrance, and I thought, no, oh, no, it's only like September the 13th, and now the drones are being pushed out of the hive. A lot of new beginners don't know that, and they start freaking out when they said, see, start seeing dead bees out front. They're thinking, oh my gosh, my bees are dying. What's all this? Some beekeepers can't yet tell the difference between a worker bee and a drone, and they don't realize that drones get pushed out of the hive this time of the year. We're only 16 days away from fall, and so the bees are just knocking off the drones because they don't want to overwinter with those boys who are just going to sit in the hive all winter long and uh, not going to be mating with any queens, right? That's all they do anyway. And so in the winter, they're just going to sit around and eat all the honey. So let's knock them off. That way they won't kill our honey reserves. We can raise more drones in the spring. And so starting now here in Illinois, drones are being pushed out, killed, no longer wanted in the hive. That just means that basically the beekeeping season for gathering nectar and honey is over. Now let's get into a hive and see if that's true. Let's see what the bees are doing. Come on. All right, so let's start by lifting up the frame on this side of the super over here. The bees are actually flying around the other side of the hive, so we'll work on this side over here and see what we got up in this top super. Usually I find beetles on this frame over here against the wall. Not as many bees over here, so the beetles will hide out over here. All right, so we have a little bit of nectar being stored on that outside frame, and some of it's being capped over in the middle, but not a ton. A few beetles, like I suspected, walking around over here on the edge. Let's work our way in toward the center. So today I want to also answer a very important question that a lot of you have been asking me. And that is, what do you do with a super that isn't all the way capped over or filled up? Do you overwinter with it or not? So I want to address that uh, question. So be sure and watch this video all the way through for that answer. Let's take this second frame out. Oh, wow, capped over honey. Good shape here on this one. Nice, nice, nice. I suspect we're going to see this on all the frames as we scoot across. So one of the things we're going to do while we're inspecting this uh, hive is we're actually going to take a look at the brood nest area, see what kind of shape the bees are in as far as the population. Eggs, larvae, pupae, make sure that they're doing okay. All right, so this frame is just a frame that I put in here just as a frame that would collect, collect some uh, comb honey. And that's not what happened. You can see here the bees have turned this into drone brood in the center. And actually there's some eggs. And I'm, I'm sure those are drone eggs right there down in the cells. So we, our queen is up in this top super or has been recently for those eggs to be laid, laid there. So. What we're going to do is carefully search for our queen. Those of you that are harvesting your honey and you get supers that have honey and once you get one frame that has some brood on it, be careful because it's, um, it's possible that your queen could be up in that honey super and sometimes when you're blowing, shaking, sweeping bees off of your honey supers, you could actually injure or kill your queen, but that actually has eggs and some larvae down in there. So the queen has been here recently. The frame next to that is frame of honey. So for the most part, this is just a honey super that can be harvested. A lot of bees up here working it. So what we'll do is put this uh, 
super back together. We're going to insert the frame we took out on the wall. See, and we'll go down one more and see what the next super looks like. Let me pop in here while we're inspecting this hive and just say thank you guys for subscribing. We are now at 96,000 plus subscribers. And that means that we're only 3,000 and something away from hitting 100,000. That's gonna really put a smile on my face. And I'm offering you guys a lot of good advice, uh, free advice here on YouTube on how to keep bees. And if you wanna subscribe and help me get toward 100,000 subscribers this year, boy, would I appreciate it. Now let's get back in that hive. I put my gloves on because I have a lot of bees that are buzzing the tower. And by that I mean buzzing my face. A lot of nectar, some pollen there in the middle, some actually bee bread. But you can see that they're putting some nectar in. Friendly beetle walking around there. So let's see if we can work our way over to free up some space. Because I really would like to lift this frame out and take a look. But I don't want to do it in case if I pull it out straight up now and it uh, has a bump out on it or it's a little bit uneven, it could really cause some tear out and honey will start dripping. And you don't want any honey to drip outside your hive if like you have a screen bottom board because then it could induce robbing. So I'm trying to be careful and just make some space for that frame. So the question is, will we see brood on this frame here? That's where we'd likely see it. Now that's a very light frame, means that it doesn't have much honey on it. Ooh, look at that. It has honey on this side, a little bit of honey here. And this is not a plastic foundation. It is just a frame that the bees have built their own foundation on. And as you can see over here, they've chosen to make some drone size cells over here, larger, a little bit of worker, but mostly drone. So some people might think that's a queen cell but those are not queen cells, those are actually drone cells. Now, that looks like to be the only frame, and again, it's because it's a frame that doesn't have any foundation, like a plastic foundation sheet. So they have put, chosen that to uh, change the size of the cell and make some drone brood. So you might be asking, well, why are they killing some of their drones and raising some. Well, you know, once they start getting cooler nights, shorter nights, they start killing and pushing out the drones. So they were in the process of just doing business as usual until they realized it got cold last night maybe and it's time to start pushing drones out. Same thing here, some frame, a frame full of capped over honey. Not really much brood area for the queen to lay in, although there is a little bit over here that's mostly started some bee bread. So what we're gonna conclude is that the queen is not in this super either. She could be, but we're gonna say she's not. So let's put this super back together and lift it off and we'll make our way down into the first deep. All right, let's do the same thing now and take this super off so we can get space and get down to the bottom and we'll see what our brood looks like. Hopefully find the queen down there as well. And at least some good brood. This hive, I've not started feeding it just yet. Want to decide uh, how much honey to take off on these supers first. Let's start with our frame closest to the wall. And let's go ahead and get it started, get it up and out. That'll give us more room to manipulate the hive. All right, let's see what we got. Pretty common to see bee bread. Big plug of white pollen. On this outside wall frame. And we have some honey and some open cells. Now what we're doing today is evaluating a hive to see what we think about it. What, what kind of changes do we need to implement now in order to get it ready for winter? So one of the primary things we're gonna be looking at, uh, and I've taught you guys this a lot, is the primary reason for looking at your one of your last inspections 
as you get into fall is to make sure you have time to replace your queen if she's failing. What kind of brood pattern do we have? All right, so here we have a, a brood pattern that might appear uh, not so good, but a lot of this is emerging and it's being replaced. Uh, I can see eggs below it are larvae developing. So there is brood even in that open area. All right, a little better brood pattern over here, as you can see, uh, it's kind of laid at the same time. And these are all bees of winter physiology, by the way. Let's keep looking. We'd love to see uh, some frames of eggs because that means that in October, those bees will be emerging. Okay, let's see what we got here. Well, we do have some young larvae down in those cells, so that's promising to me. I'm looking for the queen to make sure she's uh, not on this frame here. There are a lot of drones left. They have a lot of work to do to kick all these drones out, that's for sure. All right, let's look for the queen here. Definitely she could be anywhere on these frames that have this, these open cells on them. I don't see her, so let's just drop this frame back in and keep looking. We have uh, 20 frames. These are, uh, these are only about the three, four frames out of 20 that we're looking at. There's another deep below this one that's probably got brood in it as well. A so-so brood pattern, not bad. It's probably 70, 75, 80% capped over. We got some older larvae that's white glistening in the cells, which is good, alleviating any kind of disease like PMS, parasitic mite syndrome, or any kind of um, problems that you might see with European fowl brood. Normally you don't see that in the fall, but this, this brood pattern is, is fine. It's, it's not too uncommon in a dearth after summer to see a brood pattern like this, especially if you're not feeding. Don't see the queen. So let's just keep looking at our brood. That's what we're most interested in right now. Now keep watching this video because I want to talk to you about what I do with the green drone comb this late in the year. it would be interesting for you to see what the bees have probably done to the green drone comb. Yeah, the brood pattern is, is looking good. Not bad at all, there's a lot of brood. We're starting to see many frames of brood, which is making us happier as we go. Not bad at all. Still looking good. Uh, we have a good brood for this time of the year. So right now we're looking at this hive saying, okay, we, the queen is laying really well. And, and laying a lot actually to have this, this many frames of brood just in this one deep box. So looking forward to maybe having more in the bottom one. But I'm making a decision now that I probably won't inspect below this top deep simply because the bees are really buzzing the tower pretty heavily. All right, let's take a look at this. If you enjoy watching me inspect this colony, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be notified if you click on that bell every time I make a new video. Now let's get back to that bee inspection. This has some very young larvae in it. In the center, it might be hard to see on camera, but that's good, about four or five day old larvae. Some eggs scattered around, so that looks good, promising. On this side, you can see we have brood in the center, kept over pupae. And then around the edges, we have the larvae around the outside edges. So the colony is doing really well getting prepared for winter by, you know, just continuing to raise some brood, which is always a good sign. Ooh, this feels heavy, so it's going to have honey on it. Okay, indeed, just a frame that has nectar and some honey at the top there. And again, we see drones. I'm not looking, I don't see any queen, evidence of a queen here. No queen, but just uh, a lot of nectar. 
All right, let's take a look at this green drone comb. You're going to be surprised at what you see. This year, I could not get them to draw this out. Look at this. Nothing. All year long, they chose not to do anything at all on this green drone comb. I kept it in there hoping, but nothing. No big deal. There's other ways to treat mites, which I have made video after video for you guys on different ways that you can treat for mites. Drone, green drone comb is just one way, one of many ways of integrated pest management that you can treat for mites. Here's a frame away from the brood nest area, closer to the wall, one frame from the wall. And voila, we have nectar, which is now outside the brood nest area. And that's what you would expect. Not very pulled out there a little bit. It's just what they do sometime with some foundation. They don't always draw it out perfectly even and flat. The one next to it looks good. So let's put this deep back together and let's go down one more. I decided that I would. I think it'd be a good idea to do it. I'm just curious what's on the very bottom. This is what most of you experience as a backyard beekeeper. This is not what commercial beekeepers do. Guys that have 100 colonies, 1,000, 15,000 colonies. They kind of don't inspect like this. Um, it's really cool to watch commercial beekeepers on YouTube to watch their operations and watch what they do, how they do things. But it's gotta be a lot different than how a beekeeper that's a new beginner or just has a few hives that they're, as a hobbyist, it's gonna be a lot different than what you're used to. So enjoy those commercial beekeepers that are on YouTube showing you what they do because it is entertaining and fun and amazing. Uh, but you can't always do it the same way they do it. So. You're going to have to use some good judgment if you try to run your operation with one hive the same way somebody does with thousands of hives. The most hives I think I've ever had at one time is, I think I had about little, maybe around 100, a hair over 100 hives at one time. And there was a time when we raised a lot of queens. We were trying to raise 100 queens a week and selling queens. Many of you have bought queens from us back in the day when I was really working hard to raise a lot of queens. Um, but 100 queens a week takes a lot of work. Not just raising them, but shipping them, selling them. We're in a position now where we feel uh, very good about this hive going into winter. Obviously, they have a lot of good food stored above them in the two supers. I, I wouldn't harvest that. I want my bees to have that. <laughs> Because I've heard that winter can be bad this winter. Who, who really knows what winter is going to be like? You know, you hear all these farmer's almanac says it's going to be really bad. And you hear people say things, but is it really? Who knows, right? But it sounds like that it could be bad. So we want to be prepared for the worst. Even though it may not be that bad, we're going to be ready in case it does turn bad. By leaving two supers on, plus I'm going to be feeding them my winter be kind. And I'll leave a link in the description below on how you can get a winter be kind if that's something that you want to do is feed your bees this winter. Boy, it's going to be tough getting down in that bottom deep. They're all over my head. All right, so let's drop down in the bottom deep. Now this is, uh, this is where you just have to dog on it. You got to cowboy up this bottom deep. We've had the hive open quite a while. Bees are not uh, all that happy anymore. And it's going to take us a while to put it back together. And so what we just have to do is keep working hard to get her done. We're not going to spend a lot of time. We're going to look at three or four frames maximum. I think we'll be uh, surprised at what's happening. So let's go ahead and pull out this frame that's kind of more toward the brood nest area. Oh, I'm surprised. We have the same thing going on. We have, uh, you can see young larvae being developed there, glistening. We have capped over brood. And if it wasn't getting so cloudy, looking like it's gonna rain. And if it wasn't so many bees, 
um, going at my face, telling me they're finished. We would look at a lot of frames. But I may keep going a little bit here. Let's look at the frame more toward the center again and see what we got here. So we do have a lot of brew going into winter. All right, here's a frame. Uh, it's got some eggs and larvae as well. We could be seeing the queen on this frame. Let's glance around for her queen, just in case she's here. I see some drones, but I don't see the queen. No queen there. Let's just keep working our way uh, across toward the middle. Is where we might find the queen. I'd say maximum, we're going to look at one or two more frames at the max. Okay, look at that. More brood. This is like, this hive has all the potential to really make it through winter well because of this brood of bees of winter physiology that they're producing in mid-September. And if I feed them in the next few weeks, they have a lot of space where they can actually start laying a lot more brood. Particularly on this frame here, they could add a lot more brood here. Look at me go. I'm going to look at one more. I wonder what it's like when you looked at one too many frames. How would you know that? Uh, the bees would become so cranky that it would be very challenging for you to put it back together without just sheer chaos of bees everywhere. <laughs> we might run into that. I promise this is my last one. I just want to look at one more. Bee bread, some open cells where the queen could lay. I see, um, don't really see much being laid on this frame. And of course this frame is just all bee bread. Look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and put this hive back together. Clean off the edges a little bit. See if we can get some uh, bees out of the way. It's, you know, a lot of you might feel like uh, I never want to smash a bee. Nobody wants to smash a bee, but let's be honest. It's unavoidable. It, it's just going to happen. They're, they're just moving everywhere, right? You try not to do it. Do your best to avoid it. And one of the things I like to do sometimes is I like to slide my boxes rather than drop them flat onto each other. Sometimes if you slide them, you can avoid killing bees. So you just start it off over here and get that leaf off. And by sliding it, the idea is we're moving bees out of the way instead of just smashing them on top of each other. How would I assess this colony? Pretty easy for me. I look at it and I, okay, number one, I've got a lot of honey on board. Two supers that are basically 90% full on top. I can go through the winter with both of those or pull one off and harvest it. Go through the winter with one and use my winter bee kinds on top of that. Food supply is good. Got some bee bread down below. Not worried about their resources. All right, so now let's talk about brood. What kind of brood do we have? We have a lot of capped over brood. Oh, well, that's really good. That's going to get us into uh, a lot of bees of winter physiology uh, starting in October. So I'm happy about that. Uh, what about eggs and larvae? Not seeing a ton of that. So my assessment is I, I feel good about the food. I feel good about the capped over brood, but I'm coming up short on eggs and larvae. That's because we're in a dearth. There's just nothing out there now. A little bit of goldenrod, sure. I know everybody gets excited about some of the fall flowers. They think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a bumper crop. My bees are going to do great. And sometimes they do, depending on where you live and what sort of nectar sources you have in your part of the country. I realize that. Here in Illinois, nah, we're going to come up short. 
So this colony, to, to bring it up to where I want it to be, I'm gonna start feeding them, and that's gonna be in an upcoming video. I'll show you how I'm gonna manipulate this colony, stimulate some brood production, even more to get that queen starting to lay a lot more brood. Think about it. Whatever she can lay in the next few weeks is gonna increase my chances of this colony being very populated to make it through my expected very cold winter here on the prairie where sometimes it can get to be 20 below zero wind chill factor. And so I need a lot of bees to make heat. So overall assessment, I like what I see. I like the population. Um, it's, a, it's a nice colony. I got low mite levels on it. We've been able to control that all year. It looks very promising. But the one thing that we have to do now is feed, feed, feed to see if we can get lots more eggs laid, a lot more young larvae all through the next eight weeks, for example. The more brood I can have, the better that colony is gonna be. Now, let's talk about what I promised I would mention about what about the honey stores on top? Would you ever go through the winter with a partially filled honey super? No, I'm not comfortable with that. So here's what I found in my personal experience is that let's say I have a honey super on top of my colony and I'm counting that as food for the winter, but I only have five frames of filled uh, honey and the other five frames are kind of empty or just partially filled with nectar, not really capped off or anything, not much up there, right? Maybe some, even some uh, empty comb because as it gets more into winter, the bees are gonna move up into that super. And as they do, they're gonna only find five frames of honey and that's gonna make them come up short. And so for me, if I'm gonna leave a honey super on, it's gotta have at least eight solid frames capped over on both sides. And because I expect the ones against the wall not to have a lot and the winter cluster isn't gonna be nailed against the wall anyway, they're gonna be in the center. Five isn't enough for me, eight is what I'm looking for. Now, what do I do if I have a partially filled super and I kinda wanna leave it on because I know the bees put it there, they need it, but I don't wanna leave just five because it's probably not gonna be enough. What do I do? Couple of things you can do. You can feed them with the winter bee kind that we make and that will help them have an emergency feed source in addition to the five frames that are up there. That's not a bad idea sometimes to go ahead and leave at least five. Would I leave four on there? Absolutely not. So my minimal is five to eight frames capped over, but I would not let them overwinter with just five and not feed them during winter. Well, I've got to take this call, B Team 6 member. A B Team 6 member needed uh, information about traveling, uh, moving some hives around, so I was able to give them some good pointers about moving hives. Partially filled supers. I'm just not comfortable having partially filled supers going into winter. And so I'm gonna pull those frames. I can freeze them and I can use them in the spring. They stay perfectly fine when they're frozen like that. Or I can put them right now, you know, brush the bees off and I can give those partially filled frames to another hive that may have partially filled frames. So in other words, I may have one colony that has only four uh, filled capped over frames of honey. And now I've got a hive that has five now I can just take these five, brush the bees off, and combine them over there. And now I have nine in one colony, and then I can pull off that super off another colony. So feel free to manipulate these uh, different frames that are partially filled with honey, and that will help you out a lot. Now, if you only have one hive, I just recommend that you just pull that super off if you have less than eight filled frames of honey because it's just not enough to get you through the winter. I don't want the bees moving up there and only having those five frames if you're not gonna feed them through winter. But by all means, you know, you're a citizen scientist. If you kinda wanna experiment, see how things go for you. The key is feeding your bees in the winter. That really works well for me. And so many people have bought my winter bee kinds uh, for over a decade now and have such good winter survival, feeding those bees all winter long. And again, I documented all of that last winter showing you how we do that and how well the bees just stay so populated all winter long. 
Um, but, you know, I understand what you're going to be wrestling with with these partially filled supers and what to do with them. So hopefully I've given you some recommendations. But again, you can sort of do what you want to with them. But just me personally, and I'm not the final say, I'm not the final expert, and I don't have all the answers. I'm just one beggar telling another beggar where the food is, okay? <laughs> but for me right now, I'm just wanting not to overwinter unless it's pretty much filled up, eight frames capped over, ready to go. Partially filled isn't going to cut it for me. I've tried it before. A lot of those partially filled frames with nectar in them will crystallize when it turns cold. Those crystallized frames of honey just aren't any help at all to the bees when they get up there. Also, don't forget to take your queen excluders off if you have those. If you have a queen excluder going into winter underneath your honey super and you want those bees to go up into that honey super, they will but the queen won't, she'll be deserted and she'll die down in the bottom away from the cluster. So remove that queen excluder before you make your final inspection and get these bees ready for winter. I was gone a whole week last week out of town. I was in Alabama for an entire week very exhausted and good to be home. I'm kind of set up in a different place here because I wanted to, to get in the shade. It's a beautiful day here in Illinois and it's good to be back home. Oh boy, do I love my home. <laughs> but I had a good time in Alabama, but it is good to be back and uh, made one video uh, from a hotel business center, the last video I made about finding your queen. I put one together for you guys while I was on the road, uh, but uh, it's good. I'm looking forward to making more videos with you. By the way, those of you that are getting ready for winter, there's a lot to know about getting your bees ready for winter. A couple of videos ago, made one for you, but look, you ought to take my online beekeeping class, Getting Your Bees Through the Winter. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, and that way you can click on this link, and it will help you understand the whole process of what bees go through, the transition that the actual biology of the honeybee changes for those bees of winter physiology, and how you can capitalize on that and make a lot of bees of winter physiology. Doggone it, so many beekeepers lose their bees during the winter here in the US. It's just tragic. I mean, it's not, it's more than 50%, I think. It's just, you know, if you got two hives, you're gonna lose one. Some people lose them all. You've put a lot of time into your bees. You've, you've really enjoyed watching them, I know that. And so if you haven't taken my online beekeeping course yet, please do that. Uh, boy, that would really give you a, a better insight whether it's worth it if you wrap it, should you put heaters in there, um, should you put wind block around your hive, should you leave the bottom board open or close it for winter, you know, should you feed them in the winter time? Of course you should, but you can't feed them liquid. So how in the world do you feed bees in the winter? Can you treat for mites in the winter time? Oh gosh, it just goes on and on. It would take hours and days to address this topic. So I put together a class, an online video course, just like I'm teaching you now, Get your bees through the winter. Look at the link below in the description and please take that class. It's gonna give you an edge on making sure that your bees are ready for winter. Now's the time to make that transition from your summer, fall bees and get them ready for winter. Check it out. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes mowing around my hives can be very challenging. <laughs> Those bees, even though they don't have ears, man, they can pick out a mower from five miles away somehow. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how you can mow around your hives, make it much easier, some techniques to hopefully keep you from getting stung and attacked when you're trying to get all those summer weeds and grass mowed around your hive, check this video out here. I'll show you how I mow around my hives without getting stung. Take a look. I'll see you there.